Thank you, Phil, and happy Valentine's Day to you. And we begin the show with a look at the state of consumer privacy and how our day-to-day -day use of technology can put us all at risk. Security experts now think that the breach at U.S. retailer Target may have been caused by email phishing. Now, that's when cyber criminals trick people into giving up personal information using deceptive emails that look harmless. Now, as many as 110 million people were affected. Meanwhile, privacy groups are also challenging Facebook's $20 million settlement over the use of private data and ads. They say that the deal does not protect teenagers. So it's no wonder then that confidence in online privacy is at a three-year low. And according to privacy firm Trust, consumers are more worried about businesses than government. So with so much at stake, how is it possible that we still risk such exposure? Well, part of it is our own habits and our own fault. Take your average Wi-Fi hotspot, for example. Countless web users like to stay connected while they shop, eat, or drink. But in some cases, that free browsing comes at a big cost. Christian Yeo explains from Toronto. Restaurant owner Fan Zhang is getting ready for another night of business. Statistically, midweek isn't his busiest time. He knows exactly when that is. Fan also knows whether his diners are gym buffs, clubbers, or coffee addicts. He knows where they shop, when they visit, and for how long, simply by offering them free Wi-Fi. I would compare it to, say, for instance, uh, a, a web counter on a website. Fan has a tracker built into his restaurant's Wi-Fi hotspot, which follows his customers' movements once they've logged on with a phone or tablet. The data that his tracker collects is combined with that from other venues across the city to build a picture of consumer habits. I didn't have any way of really assessing my traffic or getting an accurate statistic on how much business I do compared to the volume of traffic that is running through the neighborhood. I thought you might as well give it a shot. The company behind it is building a network of clients and trackers around the world. They liken the service to checking in at venues through social media. There's no application download required. There's no network connection required. The difference is that while Foursquare or Facebook know your name, know your contact information, we know none of that personal information. So what we do know is that this mobile phone goes into a coffee shop three times a week. But we don't know who that person is. We don't know how to get in touch with them. Uh, so it's all kind of anonymous data. Tracking consumer habits is nothing new. Loyalty cards do the same. And most online shoppers know that a cookie isn't always a sweet treat. As firms like Amazon and Google have shown, when it comes to effective marketing, knowledge is power. We saw a lot of these smaller brick and mortar retailers struggling to compete against the Amazons of the world. And so it was our mission to really help equip them with the tools to learn about their customers to compete against e-commerce. The data helped Fan target his fitness fan clientele with promotional t-shirts to get his brand noticed by other like-minded people at the local gym. It gives you insight into how you can potentially convert other people into customers from beyond you know, just the four walls of your establishment. These developments are bound to raise fears over privacy. Mobile carriers are already looking to sell location data to advertisers. Consumer intelligence is now a hot commodity, even for the smallest of firms. And the technology needed to acquire it is already in most people's hands. Christian Yeo, CCTV, Toronto.